In Genesis chapter 3, the author of Genesis writes that Adam and Eve sowed big leaves, sorry, not big leaves, he said fig leaves. Have you ever wondered why he says fig leaves and not large leaves? Because then you could just put in any large leaf you wanted, right? So why specifically fig leaves? Why not just say large leaves or just leaves? It's fig leaves in particular. Why? Well, I think we have a potential answer staring us right in the face in today's video. Hi there, welcome back to Mudwalkers. My name is Chris. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit follow on Vimeo, Rumble on Rumble, all the things. I have social media links in the link tree in the description down below. I also have a Patreon link down there, by the way, if you want to support what I do, that would be great. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, I have been watching Ancient Egypt and the Bible for a long time. Uh, the channel is put on by a man named David Falk. He's a professional Egyptologist. He has a PhD, by the way. Smart guy. He knows his stuff. And you might remember him from a previous video that I did called... Um, what was the exact title? It was this. And I was asking the question, you know, as to whether clothing was really that expensive in the Bible. And according to Falk, who is an expert in the ancient Near East, by the way, um, said that, yeah, basically, clothing really was that expensive in the ancient world. More recently, he made a video about Genesis chapter 3. And as you can imagine, given, you know, my own field of hobby study, uh, that, that title grabbed my eye immediately, because with Falk's experience in this issue, in this, you know, whole ancient Near Eastern cultural historical thing, I expected him to have a really robust understanding of this passage, and I think he does. I watched this whole video, I was really pleased by it, uh, I really, really like his take, I think it's really valuable, and I think that it lines up with everything else that I know about the ancient Near East, which is really gratifying, which means that, you know, maybe my studies aren't completely off base here. <laughs> um, we're not going to play his whole video because it's over 20 minutes long, and not all the video has to do with our subject today. But I have put a link to his original video in the description down below. Go watch the video, it is incredible. Go watch the rest of his channel also incredible. If you are at all interested in the cultures surrounding ancient Israel in the Old Testament, go watch his channel. Obviously, from the title, he's focusing on Egypt. But he also has a lot of great um, videos about other cultures in the area. And uh, he's even given some art, 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 arguments about when exactly the Exodus took place. And I, I personally still don't know what to think about when exactly the exodus happened, but it's really interesting to hear the robustness of his arguments. Okay, anyway, I'm done rambling. Go check out his videos. They're super informative. Let's watch what he has to say about Genesis chapter 3. In the moment after eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the two humans seem fine. But something is happening all around the humans. Suddenly, in subtle ways. Quote, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. The first sign something has happened is that their eyes are opened, and they noticed they were naked. So they made clothes from fig leaves. Readers from the ancient Near East would understand that fig leaves are not appropriate for clothing. Fig leaves contain a latex that has pure coumarins in it. These substances cause a burning sensation and itch. Ouch. It's a bit like stuffing a cactus down your crotch. Ugh. I was tempted to conduct an experiment to test this hypothesis, to see if fig leaves were actually irritative, irritant, irritant, irritating. But I decided to conduct a simple Google search to, um, you know, test the waters, and I found that wearing fig leaves is indeed quite a stupid idea. So I, I opted not to do the experiment. Actually, you may have noticed that I've occasionally begun referring to the fig leaf clothing concept in general recently as stupid, and there's a reason for that. Imagine if poison ivy not only gave you an itchy rash, but also caused intense burning, stinging, and, and pain, and gave you flesh-crumbling boils. Um, that is a condition called phytophotodermatitis, 
and it is um, the effect that you get on your skin when you rub fig leaves on them. It comes from the furacumarins that are in the, uh, the leaves of the fig tree. Furacumarin was way easier to say than I expected. So if your skin touches fig leaves, chances are you're going to notice that the, the next day in big ways. I've left links to three articles in the description down below that go over the effects of phytophotodermatitis um, caused by fig leaves. I'll give you fair warning ahead of time though that these articles include photographs of injuries caused by phytophotodermatitis and some of those photos are kind of gnarly so if you're of a weak constitution uh, you might want to steer clear of those. But uh, the next time you hear a pastor preaching on Genesis chapter 3 and he praises Adam and Eve for their you know wisdom or virtue for wearing the fig leaves, just remember it was, um, it's actually pretty stupid. Just remember, the passage begins with Adam and Eve hearing out the serpent say the radical opposite of what Yahweh told them about the situation. They hear him out without going to Yahweh for a counter argument, which is a stupid thing to do. Then they actually eat the fruit, which is a stupid thing to do. Then they cover themselves with fig leaves. We'll get to that in a second. Then they, when they hear God coming, they hide from him, which is a stupid thing to do. And then when he actually calls them out and they come and meet him, they start arguing with God, which again is a stupid thing to do. So forgive me if I look at this list of stupidity and I get to this thing in the middle called fig leaves and I go, hey, that's kind of stupid. Everything they did in this situation was a big ball of stupid mess, okay? I'm not trying to say that Adam and Eve were especially stupid, because we're all stupid. We all do stupid things. I bet you can look back into your, your past, probably this last week, and think of something stupid that you did. I know I can. But that's part of the point of this passage, right? Is that we all mess up. We all do stupid things sometimes. But Yahweh is here to forgive us. He's here to provide for us. He's here to save us from our own stupidity. So yeah. Uh, we're all a little stupid sometimes. Sometimes very stupid. All the time. Moving on, let's pick up where we left off with Dr. Falk. But before we do that, I'd like to thank my generous supporters over on Patreon. These guys are making my channel possible. They are keeping my work sustainable. Guys, I can't thank you enough for what you're doing on Patreon. You guys are just, you're, you're fueling Mudwalker's progression into the future. I'm, I have the opportunity to do some traveling this year, maybe even tour some, re some more resorts like I did at Cypress Cove. We have a, um, a tour, another tour I actually shot just recently that I'm still working on editing. That'll be coming out soon in 2024. And hopefully I'll get to, to tour even more resorts because these resorts deserve the publicity. They deserve to be promoted. And uh, if I can help with that, I wanna help. I think that we need to get more people involved, not fewer. I think that's going to involve more publicity, not less. And Patreon, again, is making that possible. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, check out the link down in the description below or uh, the link that will appear here. And consider supporting what I do. If you pay the $10 option or above, you get access to a monthly video call with me and the other patrons. It's a great time for us to hang out and share stories and swap ideas. It's just a great time. One of the highlights of my month, honestly, getting to talk to you guys. Had some great experiences recently, and I think they're only going to get better as we go. So uh, with that, let's get back into the video. Okay, now let's pick up where Falk left off. It's also important to understand that this text is not explicitly about sexual shame. Instead, the humans immediately realized that they were exposed to the environment. Yes, they were naked and unashamed they're also now realize that they no longer have the feeling that they're protected and safe. This was their first taste of death. Just real quick, if you watch the full video, you get more context here because um, a lot of the video has to do with the ancient Near Eastern con concept of death, which um, is very different from the modern Western idea of death. In the modern West, we think of death as becoming inert, becoming, you know, completely, you know, flatline. But to an ancient Near Easterner, that's not how death worked. It was to be separated from the source of life. Like when you pluck a leaf from a tree, the leaf might still be green, but it would be considered dead because it has been separated from that to which it belongs. The things that belong together have been separated. And in the ancient Near Eastern mind, that's what death was, was a separation of two things that belonged together. 
Man was no longer integrated with, but separated from his environment, and nature was hostile to them. So according to David Falk, an expert on ancient Near Eastern culture and history, Genesis 3-7 is not about shame. Verse 7 shows us the onset of these hazards um, as part of an, an awareness within humans that we're no longer at harmony with the environment. And the rest of the chapter is about the human versus the divine responses to this problem. The human response is to interact with the environment in the basically the stupidest way imaginable. And then Yahweh comes along with seasoned wisdom and actually gives them a workable solution instead of walking around with cactuses on their crotches. Please do watch Dr. Falk's video in its entirety, the whole 20 minutes. It's a fantastic look at what death really meant in the ancient Near Eastern mind. I think we can learn a lot from his video and from his channel in general. Highly informative uh, and actually pretty funny sometimes. I love the way that he weaves comedy and jokes into his content. It's just brilliant. And uh, I think at that point, I'm going to be rambling if I keep going. So I think we're done with this video.